Hello, welcome to this DCS F-14B tutorial. In this video I'll be covering the use of the Phoenix missiles. So to begin, I'll equip my Phoenixes using a keybind that toggles between Sparrows and Phoenixes. I am in TWS Auto, covered in the uh, BVR tutorial video, track wall scan auto. And currently, Jester has already locked up a target about 66 miles away from me. You can tell it's flashing, it's white, and it has a 1 on the right hand side. The flashing means it, it, we have a lock. We can also tell we have a lock by this vertical line that appeared on our VDI, and the hot trigger showing we have a launch authorization. So if I wanted to fire, which I will for this example, I will just press and hold the trigger for three seconds as long as I have the cues to fire. So holding three seconds, and away it goes. At this point, we now see a countdown on the right hand side, and this is telling us how many seconds until the missile uh, impacts. When this starts to flash, this number flashes, it means the missile has gone active and we no longer need to guide it into the target as it is a FOX-3. Until that number starts to flash, we are required to keep the target lock on our radar so that we can guide it in. As soon as the plane, or as soon as Jester is able to lock another target, we'll have the same symbology. We'll get a vertical line here, a hot trigger, and it will start to flash down on the um, radar repeater. If you have a lock and you see this upside down T on your HUD, or on your navigation page. This is a steering cue for firing your weapons. So what you want to do is put this upside down T in the center of your climb indicator. When you fire phoenixes, they are auto lofting, so you want to be as level as possible when you fire them. If you angle up to try to assist the loft as you would with other Fox 3s like Amram's, you can actually break the missile's guidance and it will just shoot off into space or not go for your target. Here we can see the numbers flashing. It means the missile has gone active and we are no longer guiding it ourselves. It is now negative, which means it probably missed the target. We have another lock indicator, so I'll press and hold the trigger. And away the Phoenix goes. That's how you utilize your phoenixes at distance with TWS. If we were up close, we could flip the ACM cover switch up, and that would change our phoenixes to go active right off the rails. So we wouldn't have them lofting up to hit a target. They would just go straight out and hit the first target they see. So if I flip this cover up, I pull the trigger, I fire the phoenix and it's just going to go straight and hit the first thing it sees. Put that back down so we can actually utilize the radar. And I still have the hot trigger indication. I'll press and hold the trigger. And away the last phoenix goes on a target. Because everything is so overlapped, you can either get used to reading it like that, or you can tell Jester to change the TID range, uh, just like normal. If he would let you. Sometimes your options go away. You kind of just have to go with the flow and see what it lets you do. So I generally just get used to reading it on the display, even though they're overlapped. Alright, that covers everything dealing with the Phoenixes. Thanks for watching.